Hello again. I got. I'm, I look tired. <laughs> I had makeup on. I just wiped it off. Did a photo shoot with some friends today. That was fun. Uh, if you guys saw the previous video that I uploaded earlier, uh, that was from that. That was also on my TikTok. Um. So uh, the reason I'm making this video and why it's actually long but also kind of has more to it. So close, my freaking phone. Um, is because I wanted to kind of make a compilation of this one person's uh, TikToks I've been reacting to. They're all Harry Potter head cannons and I enjoy watching them. I love reacting to them. Every time they show up on my For You page, I immediately pause the video, go to the sh uh, share button, go to react, uh, duet, and I immediately duet it and I just react. Um, he actually did one today. Still today for me, but yesterday for him, he lives in England. Um, so, uh, and, uh, earlier in, before that video I posted, he had been doing a live stream, I com made a comment on it, he posted, he said one of my headcanons, which you guys will hear in the, which will be near the end of the video, I want to go from the very first one I reacted to, it's gonna be right after this, and then it's gonna be all the other ones I reacted to. I might include the Yu-Gi-Oh one, because Joey Wheeler is amazing. I love Joey Wheeler. It's like he's one of my favorite Yu Gi Oh characters because he's doing a new series with someone else. It's gonna be about Yu Gi Oh, and I'm really excited. I love Yu Gi Oh, it's what I grew up on. Um, but I do want to say that I'm sorry. Um, I might start making more videos again. Um, I won't because I can't do any. I can't. I'm unable to record uh, my voice on TikTok except for a voiceover, which I really don't like doing. Uh, cause I feel like it's weird. I'm, like, I'm watching myself and doing a voiceover, so I'm like, I don't like this! But like, if it was my friends in the video, I would totally do the voiceover cause you don't see me, and I don't like talking over myself and just see what I'm doing. Unless I'm talking while I'm doing it, as you guys can see, cause I'm me. Um, stupid notifications, <laughs> notifications, but um, I will be trying to upload more videos on here and on my TikTok and maybe doing more stuff with Twitter and all that stuff. Um, you'll probably see more of me like after I'm done hanging out with certain fr my friends for, like every week. Like Wednesdays I'll probably try to, I'll try to upload every Wednesday um, because those are usually the days I hang out with my friends and I'm like <laughs> I hang out with them all my social energy is gone by the time I'm done with them. So when I come home I'm back like ah I'll recharge let's record a video. Just something I can start doing. I'm really excited to start doing it actually. But this video is going to, uh, it's basically a big like, you are awesome. I love watching your videos. Thank you for enjoying my reactions to this one person on TikTok. I will leave his TikTok link in the below, his Twitter, his Instagram, and his YouTube channel. And you guys will get, I'll put my TikTok and Twitter uh, information down below as well. If you guys want to check me out, if you want to check him out. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. I'm really, really excited to show you guys this and, um, it's something I've been kind of interested in doing because I've seen a lot of like TikTok compilations and I'm like, I want to see if I can do that. I'm going to try that. And that's what I'm doing with this video. Um, so it's going to be this, it's going to be the first part that I just recorded and then I'm going to find the first one I did, uh, with that reaction and do go to each one of them. Possibly the one about Yu Gi Oh! Um, I can't remember if there's one or two. I can't remember if I've reacted to more than one. I can remember the Joey Wheeler one because that one was amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, if I do put the Joey Wheeler one in there, it'll be at the very end. And maybe when I've reacted to more and there's more out there, I may do a second part of this. So I hope you guys like this. And again, thank you so much for enjoying my reactions. I will. It's just amazing, and <laughs> thank you so much, and I hope you have a really awesome day, and anyway, you guys, and as always, like, comment, if you guys want to subscribe, that's perfectly fine, um, let me know what you guys want me to do in another video, if you guys want me to talk about what I've been doing with my friends, um, we will have a YouTube channel coming out soon, it's up there, oh my gosh, sorry. Um, got a notification about how many photos we took today. 117. That's just on her camera. I have some on my phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to see how many I took on my phone. But I hope you guys enjoy this video.
please do check out his TikToks and his YouTube channel and all of his links and below. So, love you guys. I'm not doing my old uh, sign out anymore because I'm not a, in high school anymore. I'm not a kid. Well, I still have a kid. Anyway, <laughs> I'm 20. I'm not doing that anymore. All right. Bye, guys. Harry Potter headcanons, try not to get emotional challenge. Blind you at this, I want to see how you do. Harry went to the funerals of everyone that died defending Hogwarts, but Collins was the one that made him cry. To this day, Mrs. Weasley still sometimes slips up and calls George Fred. When she does, they just hug in silence. Newt Scamander fought in the Battle of Hogwarts and died in the headmaster's office, defending the honor of his oldest friend. Hedwig was well taken care of after she passed away. I mean, Harry was there. Well, his eyes were a different color, but he looked after her. Neville visited his parents after the Battle of Hogwarts, telling them all about what he did to save the world. As he left, Alice grabbed his hand, and when he turned around, he could have sworn he saw a glimmer of pride in her eyes. A first year student takes a deep breath and closes her eyes. She starts walking. She doesn't stop walking. She doesn't stop until she reaches the top of the stairs. She looks back and shudders in relief. She knew she was a real girl. Okay, after the emotional roller coaster that was yesterday's video, here's some upbeat Harry Potter headcanons. Dumbledore is completely immune to legitimacy. If anybody were to try, all they would hear was, Always look on the bright side of life, on repeat. Ginny and George eventually warmed up to Fleur pretty well, once they realized that she'd been using her Vela powers to prank people. Harry eventually sued the Daily Prophet for libel and destruction of character, and his key witness was a very regretful Cornelius Fudge. Luna and Xenophilius Lovegood got way into Pokemon Go. James and Sirius once levitated their beds and flew them all around Hogwarts at night. Once Dumbledore caught them, they argued that they shouldn't get punished because they technically cast the spells in their rooms and they never actually set foot outside of their dormitories after hours, so they didn't break any school rules. Dumbledore was so amused by this argument that he let them get off scot-free and refused to change the wording of the rule. No sad one today. Drink water and stay safe. My hair's blue and I've shaved. It's time for more Harry Potter headcanons! Harry is an amazing cook. Ginny burns bread and butter. Contrary to popular belief, Ron's relative who's an accountant isn't actually a squib. He's just a wizard who is done with the wizarding world shit. Harry eventually introduced all of his wizarding friends to muggle movies, and now Luna can't stop quoting Princess Bride. I don't give a damn what anybody says, the Merlin in Harry Potter is Colin Morgan's Merlin. After the Battle of Hogwarts, Daedalus Diggle became the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, enjoying the position for 15 years before retiring to the Lake District. Once Wormtail made it to the afterlife, James, Sirius, Remus, and Lily all gave him a good slap in the face, and then thanked him for coming through in the end. In modern-day Hogwarts, Muggleborns use Howlers to rickroll people, and the purebloods have no idea what's so funny. And finally, it was Remus who discovered the chocolate helps after a Dementor. He went to Azkaban to visit Sirius, but couldn't face him, and ate the gift that he brought for him on the way out. Troll in the dungeon! Also headcanons. Once Sirius read about the Yule Ball, he decided to fund, organize, and throw one, even though there was no Triwizard Tournament, specifically to get Marlene McKinnon to go out with him. Once Kingsley abolished the Statue of Secrecy, in this video here, Ravenclaw Terry Boot opened up a shop where he would transfigure people. You know, like hair coloring, cosmetic surgery, gender reassignment surgery, teeth straightening, that sort of thing. Percy eventually took in Winky after the Battle of Hogwarts. It took her a while to get sober, but after that she was very happy. Percy was always nice to her when they were working for Mr. Crouch. When Arthur Weasley retired, Harry bought him a ticket to Disney World, and Arthur said it was the best day of his life. Molly Weasley took out their wedding photos, and Arthur repeated that it was the best day of his life. And finally, Fred has spent decades preparing the ultimate death prank on George, with the help of the Marauders and his uncles Gideon and Fabian. He's excited to pull it off, but he hopes he doesn't have to do it soon. I'm going to the supermarket, so it's time for Harry Potter headcanons! Witches and wizards can't be killed by non-magical means. Oh, they can only die of old age or magical stuff like... Dragon pox or a spell or something like that. Ron's always said that the best moment of his life was when he got a chocolate frog made of him, but the second best moment of his life was when the Chudley Cannons asked him to play Keeper in a friendly game, and that's one of the few games this century that they actually won. Dumbledore is a direct descendant of Babbity Rabbity. Harry perfected wordless spellcasting a couple of years after the Battle of Hogwarts, but he still likes to shout the spells melodramatically because he thinks he sounds really cool. Expelliarmus. And finally, a pretty well-known one, Hermione discovered that she was a witch because of Matilda. She fell in love with it almost instantly, and did that thing that kids do, where they try and reenact their favorite parts, which for her was summoning the books from the bookshelf. But it worked! Oh my goodness, would you look at the time? It's time for more Harry Potter headcanons! The Marauder's Map was Wormtail's idea. After the Battle of Hogwarts, Hufflepuff won the House Cup every year for 19 years. 
Dumbledore is a huge fan of Monty Python, and as such, every year he forces all the staff to watch Life of Brian with him at Easter. In his fifth year, Sirius Black gave Professor McGonagall a bowl of catnip for Christmas. In his sixth year, she gave him a chew toy. Umbridge actually hates cats. She outfitted her room with a bunch of cat stuff specifically to ruin them for McGonagall. Tonks is non-binary. After Harry and Ginny get married, Mrs. Weasley insists that Harry calls her mum. The Philosopher's Stone and the Sorcerer's Stone are two separate magical items, the Sorcerer's Stone being slightly weaker. This is the one that Flamel actually managed to make. The Philosopher's Stone would actually make you fully immortal after one sip of its elixir, but the Sorcerer's Stone you need to keep on drinking it. And finally, since Dobby's death, Harry has never worn a pair of matching socks. It's time for- hang on. That's better. Head cannons. James once accidentally wrapped baby Harry in the invisibility cloak and then lost him for like an hour. Eventually, some muggle-born kid invented a spell that meant you could use your wand as a lightsaber. Every day is a struggle for Dean Thomas to not just say screw it and become a superhero. During the time of the books, Mary Poppins is in Azkaban for breaking the statute of secrecy. <laughs> Much like the Prime Minister, the Queen and the Royal Family know all about the Wizarding World, and she actually knighted Harry, Ron and Hermione for their efforts in ending the Second Wizarding War. Ron beat chess world champion Magnus Carlsen in seven moves. Obliviating him was the hardest thing he's ever done. And finally, everyone who's ever been in Slytherin can speak fluent Murrish. The Slytherin common rooms run underneath the lake in some parts because they're in the dungeons, so all Slytherins learn to read, speak, and write Murrish so that they can have conversations with the Mer people. Hey, tiny Lego Harry, do you know what time it is? Time for more Harry Potter headcanons! Kingsley Shacklebolt's main aim in life is to peacefully abolish the statute of secrecy and reintegrate muggles and wizards. Hufflepuffs have a game night every two weeks, but Monopoly is banned after... The incident. Tom Riddle nicknamed the Basilisk Sally. Neville Longbottom isn't just a herbologist, he's also pretty adept at growing certain... Muggle... plants. Rita Skeeter eventually lost all of her credibility in the Wizarding World, so she fled to the Muggle World and started TMZ. Percy Weasley eventually achieves his dream of becoming Minister for Magic, and his parents couldn't be more proud of him. The name Marauders actually came from Severus Snape. Gildora Lockhart has a black belt in karate. After the war, Harry and Crumb spent a surprising amount of time together just flying around and talking about Quidditch. They found it a pretty good distraction. And finally, Harry has only ever given one autograph, and it lies preserved on Colin Creevy's grave. Harry Potter had cannons. Snape wasn't the only Slytherin that Lily Evans was close to. She also had a quiet friendship with Regulus Black. They'd hang out at the Slug Club meetings. Nobody ever let Draco live the ferret thing down. Eventually, he decided to steer into the skid and bought Scorpius a pet ferret called Ally. There was always a small part of Madame Pomfrey that didn't believe Sirius betrayed Lily and James. I mean, he was in the hospital wing every five days, so she knew him better than most teachers. When she first joined the newly renamed Magical Creatures Department, Hermione spent a few years as a vampire hunter, and by all accounts did a pretty damn good job at it. And finally, Fang passed away in the Battle of Hogwarts, right by Hagrid's side. After a mourning period, Hagrid bought a new dog, a ten-foot-tall hellhound called Fang Two. As requested, it's time for Headcanons, Marauders Edition. Sirius instinctively called Muggleborn's mudbloods for about two years, but that's how long it took James to train him out of it. Wormtail was actually a pretty decent wizard. The teachers just thought that he wasn't too great because he often turned into a rat to avoid going to classes. Lily's first moment of real affection for James was when she saw him consoling a first-year student who was going through some serious exam stress and really panicking over it. When Sirius ran away from Grimmauld Place, all the Marauders banded together to pull off a heist, stealing all of his stuff out of his room. In his third year, James called a Gryffindor house meeting to announce that Sirius Sirius jokes were now officially banned. And from the crowd, Sirius yelled, Oh, come on, seriously? And finally, Join my Discord! Link in my bio! It's Harry Potter headcanons! Luna is the only person to have ever beaten Ron at chess, and neither of them could tell you how the hell she did it. Once they learned about the Second Wizarding War, Ilvermorny School decided to commemorate the events by writing and performing a very Potter musical. Harry and Ginny do all of the housework by hand on principle. James gets really annoyed at this. After mad Moody's death, the Aura Department gained a new motto. CONSTANT VIGILANCE! And finally, Fred has a picture in the Gryffindor common room. George snuck in, put it up, and charmed it so it couldn't be taken down. And so far, nobody has been able to figure out how to undo that charm. As requested, it's time for Headcanons, Marauders Edition. Sirius instinctively called Muggleborn's mudbloods for about two years, but that's how long it took James to train him out of it. 
Wormtail was actually a pretty decent wizard. The teachers just thought that he wasn't too great because he often turned into a rat to avoid going to classes. Lily's first moment of real affection for James was when she saw him consoling a first year student who was going through some serious exam stress and really panicking over it. When Sirius ran away from Grimmauld Place, all the Marauders banded together to pull off a heist, stealing all of his stuff out of his room. In his third year, James called a Gryffindor house meeting to announce that serious, serious jokes were now officially banned. And from the crowd, Sirius yelled, Oh, come on, seriously? And finally, Join my Discord! Link in my bio! Now it is time for more Harry Potter head cannons. The unforgivable curses are actually addictive. The more you use them, the more you want to use them. And that's part of why they're banned. At the end of every year, the Gryffindors throw a massive inter-house party in the Gryffindor common room. And in James Sirius' first year, they actually managed to get the Weird Sisters to show up. Somehow, Nearly Headless Nick actually lost his head in the Battle of Hogwarts. The Headless Hunt finally offered him a position in their club, but he graciously declined, having fallen in love with being the Gryffindor house ghost. Speaking of house ghosts, once Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem was finally destroyed, Helena Ravenclaw was able to make peace with her unfinished business and move on to the afterlife. And finally, Draco Malfoy was completely unable to perform a corporeal Patronus. That is, until the day Scorpius was born. That last headcanon was actually courtesy of Little Schmidt, another fantastic Harry Potter creator on this app. He's challenged me to a Harry Potter trivia contest on his Twitch, so you know, be sure to go follow him, check out his stuff, and use the hashtag Team Keen to give me some- Oh shit, it's time for headcanons! Nowhere in Hogwarts is gossip spread faster than the staff room. Lee Jordan eventually became the head of the Department of Magical Games and Sports, and introduced a brand new tournament, the Fred Weasley Cup. Blaze Zavini is FTM trans. Ron never really forgave Malfoy completely, but he did agree to, you know, stop fighting him. Instead, he decided to start and fuel the Drapple rumor. After the war, Slytherins weren't really treated that great at Hogwarts, so the Hufflepuff prefects decided to assign every new Slytherin a companion Hufflepuff. You know, to make them feel better and defend them against those who would do them ill. And finally, every year on the 24th of June, all Hufflepuffs gather in their common room and have a two-minute silence, honoring the death of Cedric Diggory. I solemnly swear that it is time for headcanons. After the Battle of Hogwarts, Draco became a huge meme at the school. Anytime something went wrong for one of the students, they would scowl and say, My father will hear about this! Godric Gryffindor was really short. When Fred and George first found the Marauder's map, Percy was kind of suspicious of them. They spent three months muttering random phrases about mischief to a piece of blank parchment. Of course they were up to something. Norberta the Dragon eventually had children of her own, and Charlie named the biggest of them Hagrid. Three elections in a row, Harry was actually elected as Minister for Magic by a massive write-in campaign. He declined each time in favour of becoming the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts. The inappropriate charms that Aberforth Dumbledore was performing on goats was using them as test subjects and experiments to try and find a cure for being an Obscurus. He never really got over the death of Arion. Harry Potter head cannons. Harry and Ginny eventually got a dog for the family, and they called it Snuffles. Here's one from Alison Meredith. Teddy Lupin, just like Tonks, is non-binary. Remember in first year when Fred and George pelted the back of Quirrell's head with snowballs? Yeah, that's where Voldemort was. Voldemort remembered that, and he told Rookwood to kill Fred and George. <laughs> in the 21st century, there is an explosion of new spells invented by Muggleborns who were influenced by pop culture. The lightsaber spell that I had mentioned before, and a spell to summon holographic monsters to recreate the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, and more versatile elemental spells for Avatar The Last Airbender, that sort of thing. And now a Slytherin headcanon for A.J. Hall. George Weasley hired Theodore Knott to work for Weasley's Wizard Weezers. Theo used his connections in the Ministry of Magic to sell some of their designs to the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, like the fake wand, because some stuff like that could be really useful. Lavender Brown came back as a Hogwarts ghost. That don't make me laugh. Joey Wheeler is a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Stop insulting my friends, Kaiba! Thank you, but I got this. I came second in Duelist Kingdom, beating the regional champion and two people who were cheating, by the way. I also placed fourth in Battle City with a brand new deck, having to beat two more people who were also cheating. Great tournament management, by the way. And you know what? Maybe my deck is fourth-rate. Well, not all of us can afford every card in the damn game. Please bear in mind that with that fourth-rate deck, I beat Yugi off-screen after the end of Battle City and win back my Red Eyes. Remind me again how many times you beat Yugi without threatening to kill yourself if you're lost? I ain't a billionaire, I ain't got magic powers, but you know what I do got? 
a place as one of the greatest duelists of all time in the eyes of Maximilian Pegasus. So why don't you stick that in your blue eyes white dragon jet and fly away, rich boy? <laughs>